Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to be continuing with the light recommission of the Triumph Sprint 900. In the, uh, in the last video, um, obviously you watched me do a plug, filter, uh, an oil change, uh, which is all pretty straightforward, but in this video what I'm going to be doing is removing the carburetors and the airbox. Now, the, uh, the air filter on this bike is contained within the airbox itself, and in order to get the airbox off, you have to remove the carburetors. A bit of a pain, but um, necessary nonetheless. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through all of that. Once we've got them on the bench, we'll have a look at um, each of the parts and uh, check them over for serviceability. Um, the carburetors will then be getting a good tear down and a clean. So, let's tear into it, guys. Thanks for stopping by. Okay, so what we're going to do first to, uh, in order to get this um, air box off is we're going to remove the carburetors because they, uh, the air box is not going to come off um, with the carburetors in situ. In order to get the air box off, um, these two bolts here, the same on the other side, and then this whole section here, these, this whole section here will remove from the bike on both sides um, and leave us the air box and the carburetors. We'll remove the carburetors and then the whole thing can come back and then we can separate them apart and then the carburetors will basically pull out once we've disconnected the, um, the throttle and choke connections. So, first thing steps, this side. Um, here's the clamp for the airbox on this side. So we'll just loosen it off and then make sure it's, yeah, there we go. And then for the front, of the carburetor. Just here. And again, just loosen it off until it's loose enough to spin round and then that should be that should be perfectly fine. Right, now we need to go to the other side of the bike in order to do the ones on the other side. What I'm gonna do, use my torch because it's a little bit dark, there's one there for this side and then under here right there you can see the screwdriver is on it is the one for the middle carburetor hopefully you can see that and then the same at the back it's just there with my screwdriver just about on it hang on let me just get on there Bit awkward this one. There, we're on it now. So there we go. Right, what I'll do, I'll undo that one first, because that's the most awkward one. Oh, I slipped off. But it is the most awkward one. And to be honest, they weren't exactly tight. Um probably because whoever last had these undone didn't have a long screwdriver like I've got. Right, that one's nice and loose. Let's get the from one on the middle bank. This one's nice and tight. Uh, there we go. There is two clamps on these, on the rubbers for the uh, the inlets. Obviously one there, one there. Um, I don't think we'll need to undo those ones, but we'll, uh, we'll find out when we actually come to trying to remove the carbs. There we go, and last one. There we go, right. Now, uh, this is a vacuum hose that goes up to the fuel tap, um, just here, we can leave that to one side. What um, we do need to do, we can move this out of the way actually, this little bit of, this little bit of foam, it's just a, it doesn't really do a massive amount other than keep the uh, keep the cables apart from each other. And now, down here is the choke. If I operate the choke, you'll see it go backwards and forwards. Okay, and then to remove it, all we need to do is pull the outer sleeve like like so. Hopefully, you can see that on the video. And then push it forward, and it pops out. Just like that, right. 
Now, to get it out of the mechanism, the uh, there is a slot on the uh, there is a slot, and it's underneath, right at the bottom. So what we need to do is twist the cable round. Twist the cable round so that it points downwards. I went a bit too far there. Points downwards and then she should slot out. I was trying to do it with my left hand. I'm not sure I'm ever going to be left handed. And almost there. Come on. A little bit stuck. It does want to come out. Naturally, it's quite awkward to try and get it on video as well. Right, there we go. We can see it coming out now. Um, see it coming out. And there we are. She's out. Right, that is the that is the choke cable removed. We'll pop that to one side. Next thing we want to do is uh, the throttle, uh, throttle cable. And that is on the other side of the bike. So let's move around there and um, get that undone. Okay, here's the uh, here's the throttle cable that we need to disconnect, and there's um some uh, there's uh, like a lock nut that holds it into its location on the carbs. What I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this um the coil for number one cylinder because it's kind of in the way, and it's only held in with two bolts, so we'll whip them off because um, it's really quick and simple to do. And there we are, there's number one coil. What I'll do, I'll pop this on the bench so it's out of the way, kept safe. And then uh, we'll look at disconnecting the throttle cable. And there we are. Finally, we got it. So there's the lock nut. I'll put that back on there so it doesn't uh, fall off and get lost. It shouldn't do. But yeah, that was, the, uh, that was what we were trying to remove. So you can now see what the assembly is like. Um, and uh, yeah, it was um, it was a bit of a pain because there's not a lot of room. But now um, we're, uh, we're we're completely disconnected. So what we need to do next is remove the two bolts at the back here for the uh, for the air chambers. Um, bearing in mind that these bolts, I think, also incorporate the battery tray, so um, it's worth uh, it's worth bearing that in mind. Um, and then uh, once they're off, we should be in a position to be able to remove the air box and the carburetors. Right, let's take off the air chambers. That one doesn't feel like it's anything like that one. They feel totally different. I'm not even sure that that's the right bolt. Okay, let's pop that off. one off pop that to one side now let's get the one on this side off and that's that side off right then now what we can do 
is we can move the whole carburetor and airbox assembly back and that should give us some room to be able to get the carbs out. Okay, right. There's nothing stopping us from moving this whole assembly back. Now, what I'm hoping we're gonna be able to do is have enough room to be able to slide the carburetor bank out from the side. Not 100% sure if that's gonna be the case because we may need to remove the inlet rubbers first in order to give us a bit more wiggle room, but we'll, um, we'll have a go and see how we get on. Um, there's a breather there that comes out the way. All right, there we are, there's the air box. Push to one side, a bit of fuel out the uh, fuel line. All right, let's pull the carbs back. <clears throat> There we go. Come on, out you come. Don't be awkward. Yeah, it's looking promising so far. Hopefully I haven't spoken too soon. Obviously I don't want to damage any of the rubbers at the same time. So I need to be mindful of that. And there we go, one bag of carburetors. Uh, obviously these uh, they are pretty filthy, um, absolutely bogging. And that horrible yellow grime is stale fuel. Um, I think these are in well, well overdue, a good uh, clean and a service, I think. So yeah, they're, uh, yeah as i said well well in well in need of a clean they're absolutely bogging so let me put these on the bench and then we'll uh, we'll whip the airbox off right then airbox is the next thing to come off and all this got to come off in order to do this is the breather from the crankcase so we'll undo this jubilee clip hopefully that'll pop her off right there we go and then Out comes the airbox. Now, the, uh, the specified replacement interval for, for one of these um, filter elements slash airboxes, whatever you want to call it, um, is uh, 24,000 miles, according to, the, uh, according to the manual. It seems an incredibly long time for any air filter element. And as you can see, it's a heck of a lot of crust inside there. Now, I don't know about you, but I reckon that this has probably done a bit more than 24,000 miles. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a genuine you know, from the factory job. Although, something's been done with it in the past because there's glue everywhere. So I'm not sure what that was all about. But anyway, we've got a new one. We've got the, uh, the old one off and um, we've got the carburetors ready to service. So what I'm gonna do with the carb service is, uh, the, well, the carb cleaning anyway, I'm gonna make that video all of, it, all of its own because I think it deserves one, because it's quite a quite an in-depth job. So we'll make that a video of its own, and then what we'll do, um, we'll continue with this servicing once I've cleaned the bank of carbs, um, and we'll carry on with um, everything else, such as valve clearances and all that good stuff. Okay, right, I'll see you in a couple of days, probably. Right, guys, welcome back. I know I said it would be a few days, it's actually turned out to be a few weeks. Um, the weather's not been particularly great, and obviously we've had Christmas and New Year to contend with. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's taken me this long to get back into the garage. However, here are the carburetors, all nice and clean, all reassembled, all the hoses are back on. I've put new um, hose claps on all of, the, all of the hoses, so they're all good to go. Right, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put them on one side, we're gonna look at the rest of the stuff that I've got in these boxes right here. Right. Okay, here is the airbox. So, brand spanking new Triumph part, as you can see, Triumph written on it. Um, as I said previously, this was quite an expensive piece of kit, um, and the air filter and the airbox are one unit. You buy it like that. Um, bit of an expensive way to do it, but that's the way that Triumph decided to do it back then. What I do need to do, however, is fit the new rubbers. Um, to uh, to this airbox. Now I bought brand new ones, and they simply pop in to the holes like so. Each one just uh, goes into each of their holes 
and there's like a lip that's got to be forced in just like so What you could do with these to make them a little bit more supple if you wish is you could just pop them in a bit of hot water and it'll just make the rubber a bit softer um, but it's not a necessity as you can see that's two And three, as you can see, there's like a little, a little lug that the rubber just sits around just to have it in the right orientation. Okay, all right, let's move all the lock rings into a position where we'll be able to access them. So what I'll do for that one, I'll turn around so I can get to the other side. And there we go. Right, that is ready to install. Now, you remember from uh, earlier on in the episode um, that there was a breather that came from the crankcase. Um, that needs to be reinstalled. And on the back, there's a drain. And that hose is just here. And all that is is a, a liquid drain just to for any moisture to be able to get out of the bike. And I've put a new, uh, a new hose clamp on there as well. So, what I'm gonna do, in fact, no. What I'm gonna do, first is replace these rubbers. I was going to install the airbox, but it'd be easier to do these while this is off. So I've already undone all of the clamps on each of these. As you can see, they're really, really manky. And these are brand spanking new. So let's pop these ones on. Make sure they're seated properly. Just like that. Again, be mindful of the direction that you've got the screws in because you want to be able to get to them. That's obviously quite important. That's two. And the last one. We'll put that one that way around. And there we are. Nice. So, all the rubber components around the carbs and airbox, all replaced. So they should all be absolutely perfect for years. Because don't forget, these will be original. They'll uh, they'll have been original on the bike from the factory. Right. Next thing I'm going to do, drop the airbox into place. As I said before, this hose fits onto this little lug under here. Come around this side and grab it. There we go, and pop the hose clip over. And that's nice and tight, that's not coming off. These little rubber caps here actually slot into these little rails 
on either side of the airbox. You've got to line them up, otherwise the airbox won't go on. And there we go. Right, next thing I need to do is the crankcase breather. Needs to connect up to the airbox. And again, hose clamp nice and tight. There we go. Right. That is everything for the airbox for the moment. What we need to look at next is the carburetors themselves. Right then. Okay, so carburetors. What we need to do is we need to connect up the choke and throttle cables. Um, it'd be easier to do it whilst the carburetors are out if I can get enough, um, you know, enough movement on them to be able to slide them in. Hopefully it'll work. Um, where they locate is the throttle locates into the linkage just down here and the choke just up here. The choke is the easy one and all we need to do is um, connect it just like so. Obviously I struggled with this earlier on because it was on the bike and it was dark and um, it was quite hard to see but then it slides that way and then pops in there like so. But what we do need to do first is just slide that in there, like so. And then bring around. Make sure it's probably in there, which is isn't in a minute, get in. There we go. And then put it back like so. Right. That's installed. And there we go, as you can see. As you can see, this is working perfectly well. Absolutely spot on. Okay, next one is the throttle. Now the throttle needs to go down into its linkage. Now this is going to be incredibly awkward because it was incredibly awkward to get off. There's just no room in here to get your fingers into it. Come on, get in there. Okay, the end of the cable is now in the linkage. It was a bit of a pain to get it in there, and what I've done, just drop the lock nut off the end there, and then in like so. Next thing we need to do is just tighten up the lock nut, and uh, that is the throttle cable installed. What you'll notice I've done is I've actually disconnected the choke cable again, because it was actually restricting the amount of movement I had in order to be able to get the throttle cable into its mounting. So I'll put that back on again in a second. Come on, just no, no room to get fingers in here. It makes it really difficult. All right, what I'll do, I'll get the lock nut on and I'll bring you back in a sec. 
Okay, so both the throttle cable and the choke cable are now reinstalled on the carburetors. I am not gonna lie, that was a pig to get in. But now, as you can see, we've got the uh, carburetors in the position between the air box and the cylinder head. So let's navigate them into place. Obviously, making sure we don't do what I've just done and knock the rubbers out of the air box. What I'll do, I'll push them onto the cylinder head. And that'll give me a little bit more room. Right, obviously we need to make sure all the hoses come out where they're supposed to. There's the one that goes up, that goes up to the fuel tap, that's the vacuum. This is a breather, and this is a breather. They're just atmospheric breathers. They can just be pushed to one side for now. Right, what I need to do is just then make sure that the clamps are loose enough on each of the rubbers, and then we can push the carbs onto the uh, cylinder head rubbers let's just wind them off make sure right hopefully they should pop on this one up that's one at this side so the middle one should be no not quite this one's popped off again All right and there we go there all three are now located in where they're supposed to be, as you can see. Right, oh, that was a bit of an effort. Okay, what we need to do next is mount the, uh, mount the airbox up to the back of the carburetors. Okay, now that they're in place, what we need to do is just make sure that we've got all the hoses that we need in the right position. So these are the two fuel lines. One's obviously for the, the on, side of the tap, one's for the reserve side of the tap, and obviously this is the breather that goes to the tap. So let's move them all up there out of the way. Right, what we need to do next is we need to manoeuvre this air box over the back of these carburetors. And again, like everything else we've experienced so far, it's a bit of a pain. We need to make sure that each of the rubbers is properly seated on the back of the carbs. What I might do is actually pop the carbs onto the airbox first. This one's just caught up on the back of the carburetor. There we 
get a little wiggle. All right, I've got a feeling that this is going to take me a little while to get the carbs onto the airbox. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to struggle through and then I'll bring you back once I've got them on. Okay, as you can see, we've got the carburetors all mounted up where they need to be and the airbox is uh, obviously mounted onto the back of the carburetors as it should be. What we've got here is the two fuel lines and the vacuum line. They obviously go up to the tank. Now, the actual airbox and carb install is now complete. <clears throat> all the cables are done. If I operate the choke, you can see it operates perfectly well. If I operate the throttle, you can see down in here, you can see the linkage moving as it should do. So I'm happy with all of that. Right, on the fuel lines, I've got brand new hose clips for, uh, for each one and the same for the vacuum line that goes to the tap. All that needs to be done now is obviously the side pods, the air chambers on each side of the battery box need to be installed um, and then we can put the tank back on. Um, these two connectors here are the electrical connectors for the fuel pump but um, what I'm not going to do now is fit the tank and the reason for this is because two, two reasons. One, it's got stale fuel on it which I need to empty out and put fresh in. I don't want to put stale fuel through these carburetors. And secondly, we're going to carry out a valve adjustment, which um, means that the cam cover's got to come off. So there's no point in me putting the, uh, the fuel tank back on, I only have to take it off again. So yeah, we'll, um, we'll probably look at the valve, uh, the valve clearances uh, in the next episode. So anyway, guys, um, <laughs> the, uh, the carburetors and the airbox installation is done. And I'm not going to lie, that was a swine, an absolute swine. There's just, there's just very little room to get in there. Everything's battling against you. You're trying to put it in and then you'll find that one side of the carburetor rubber won't be, won't be around where it's supposed to be. And it, yeah, the, uh, the air went a bit blue um, and I didn't want to subject you all to that. So uh, obviously I brought you back in once we'd done, it, once we'd done the job. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed um, this video and hope you're enjoying what, um, what we're doing with the Triumph uh, up, to, uh, up to now. Let's... Um, Let's look at the valve clearances for the next episode, and uh, hopefully I'll see you all along for that one. Thanks very much, guys. Bye-bye now.